What's up, Bug Dougaldini in the garage? Allow me to paint a picture for you. You sit down on the couch at the end of a tough day, silly soda in one hand, salty snacks in the other. You click on the Netflix icon so that you can catch up on the latest episode of Nailed It with Nicole Byer. And instead of being greeted by that familiar Netflix menu screen, you get a little error icon. It says, please update your payment method. Turns out a credit card you've been using for Netflix expired. And now you've got a, your payment didn't go through that month. So you've got to go in there. You got to first find your darn credit card, which means you got to find your darn wallet. Then you got to put the numbers in, put it wrong the first four times, change the date. Finally, 20 minutes later, you're sitting on the couch, a little more frustrated, but finally getting ready to watch some Nailed It with Nicole Byer. Now, imagine instead of Netflix, that was your car. You pushed the remote start button and it said, please update your payment method. We can't start your car right now. That's what Toyota wants for the world in the future. That's what we're gonna talk about today. Without further ado, your December 2021 news segment. Instead of rapid fire news, we are gonna beat this story to death because there is a lot to talk about here. Today, we are talking about vehicle subscription services. The good, the bad, the ugly, what it means for the future and your weekend. Without further ado, let's talk about it. This story came to us from the driver. They broke it, Jalopnik jumped on board and then everybody else followed suit and I am just, doing my part to bring it to you. Here's the long and the short of it. Toyota, it seems a while ago, this isn't even a recent development, they changed some of the features on their new vehicles from options that you either have or you don't to subscription-based services. What do I mean? Remote Start is now a subscription-based service with Toyota. All right. So if you have a new Toyota from 2018 to present and there's a remote start on your key fob, that is a subscription-based service, meaning if you don't pay for it, you don't get it. Now, I hear what you're saying. You're saying, Doug, I have a 2019 RAV4 and my electric start works every morning. You're wrong. You're wrong, Doug. Figure it out. No, here's, here's the thing. Toyota's not that dumb. They're not that dumb. What they've done is they've given everybody a free trial period, and that trial period can uh, vary anywhere from three to 10 years, depending on the uh, trim level of vehicle you bought. We're gonna talk about that later. What other features is Toyota turning to subscription-based only? Uh, well, they have their own OnStar program. It's called Destination Assist. I don't know anything about this, but um, it is a subscription-based service now. Onboard Wi-Fi, uh, vehicle service updates, which is like your tire, your car tells you it needs new tires. So basically what happens is you buy a new Toyota. Let's say you get the base model. You get three years trial with this. After three years, you go to push your electric start. It's not going to work. You have to subscribe. It's going to be $80 a year, which if you ask me is not terrible for what they're offering, right? What we're talking about here are called paywalled features, right? There, it's not just, a, it used to be, does that car have fog lights? Yes, it either has fog lights or it doesn't have fog lights. It either has an electric start or it doesn't. Toyota's doing it different. Everything has everything. You get to tell me whether or not you want to use it and you get to pay for it. And maybe you want it this month and you don't want it that month. Now, this may sound weird, but it's been happening for a long time. The best example of this, and I already mentioned it once in this video, OnStar. OnStar was a program that GM put out Geez, when I was a kid, I feel like there was a button in all GM vehicles. To my knowledge, there still is. It's a little OnStar button. If you subscribe to OnStar and you push that button, it calls some lady named Debbie in the Midwest. And you can ask her where the nearest McDonald's is or tell her you got a flat tire or I don't know. Talk to her about the weather. I, I honestly don't know. I've never used OnStar, but it's a subscription service. Another great example of this is Sirius XM. If you buy a new car, it comes with Sirius XM as a capability. Most new cars even come with a one year uh free subscription, totally normal. Now where this gets a little bit hairier is what some other car companies have been doing with paywalled features. We can agree, remote start is not an essential. My wife would disagree when it's 22 degrees out, but it's not, I'm here to tell you. All right, onboard Wi-Fi, not an essential. Anybody with a toddler is gonna disagree, but again, I'm here to tell you, not essential. What Porsche has done with their newer Porsches, they've made uh, things like lane keep assist and dynamic light systems, paywalled features, subscription-based features. Now, why would people be upset about that? Because lane keep assist is a potentially life-saving or accident preventing technology. So people are saying, well, that's not fair. The argument here and the problem the problem that people have with this is Lane Keep Assist exists on that new Porsche. Whether I pay for it or not, you put the technology into it. The hardware required is there. The software required is there. The buttons 
everything is there. You're telling me that if I don't pay you, God knows what per month or year, I can't use lane keep assist, which could potentially prevent an accident. Now that seems a little bit evil empire for Porsche, wouldn't you say? Same thing with Cadillac. Cadillac has been developing for a while now what they're calling Super Cruise. It's their hands-free driving option. Now, this became a moot point because they had to take it off of 2021 model years uh, because of the chip shortage. But 2021 model year Cadillacs would have come with Super Cruise as a capability, but not necessarily enabled unless you paid for it. Again, that is a potentially, and I don't think so. I'd, I personally would not want lane keep assist, whatever dynamic light systems is. It kind of sounds like those gloves that the shirtless dudes at pretty light concerts wear uh, and i wouldn't want super cruise either i'll do the driving but the argument there and it is generally accepted by people who are not total plebeians like me that these technologies will save lives and so what cadillac and porsche is saying is that somebody who can afford a higher monthly subscription deserves to have more life-saving technology and you can see where a lot of people want to get off the bus once that starts being talked about we've reached the part of the video where i've run out of facts and now it's time to start screaming about opinions conjectures projects and whatever else comes into my brain hole that I feel like sharing you because when I read this it it started flipping alarm bells in my head because I know what this is really all about they don't want to charge you for remote start they could care less about all that and Porsche is just doing what the sneaky Germans do being as sneaky as possible at all freaking times what this is really leading us towards are some much loftier goals that have existed in the automotive industry for a number of years now. They want to protect their intellectual property, they want to generate recurring revenue for themselves, and they want to keep older cars off the road. Let's dig into those three real quick. First and foremost, uh, protecting their intellectual property is something that the automotive industry and similar industries, it's a battle they've been fighting for years and years and years. Think about tractors, agricultural tractors. There's all that stuff a few years ago. There was the Vice article about how John Deere has put so much proprietary technology into tractors that not only is it difficult for some farmers to fix their own tractors when in you know the past, what's more ubiquitous with farmers? than working on your own equipment. Not only do they find it difficult, it's actually illegal because the technology is proprietary. And so now instead of being able to fix it on track to the, do the doctor, the, the farmer has to pay to get the thing picked up and taken to John Deere, exorbitant amount of money to have it tested. The automotive industry has been trying to do the same thing for years. Specifically, Ford has tried to make it illegal to work on your own car. The state of California has tried to make it illegal to work on your own car. And they've tried to do more and more things to make it more difficult. That's why when you open your hood, instead of seeing a motor, you just see a collection of plastic covers. Those covers are not there so that they have a convenient place to put the maker's emblem. They're there to say, hey, don't. No, don't. I know, don't. I know it's giving you trouble right now. You're not gonna be able to figure it out. There's too many wires. You don't have what it takes, bud. Just take it to the dealership. So for a car company to make money off a guy like me, and honestly, if you're following this channel, probably a guy like you first, they need to undermine the ownership. Like we just said, they need to undermine that feeling of pride that comes with owning and working on and maintaining my own vehicle. And once they've done that, they can slip in their subscription service. And I think, and it, this breaks my heart, uh, within another 20 years, the automotive industry in the United States will probably have accomplished this goal. I think the subscription service is much more likely to take over the automotive industry than electric vehicles. There, I said it. Let's try to put a bow on this thing right now. We've talked about a lot of things. We wandered pretty far from the original Jalopnik article, which just wanted to tell us that your Toyota remote starts on a subscription now, and all of a sudden we're talking about the death of car culture as we know it. That's because I'm an alarmist. And when I read these news stories, I watch my way of life, car culture as I know it, slowly slipping away, dying right in front of my eyes. And what terrifies me is the little executive producer, what is car culture gonna look like for her? Is she gonna have to wander onto a lot and rent a car to drive? Or will she be able to own her own vehicle? Because that, in my opinion, at least in North America, uh, you guys can let me know if this is pervasive in the rest of the world. Car culture is synonymous with self-reliance and ownership, freedom, self-expression. You buy a car because that car is a little extension of yourself. That's why there are so many different looking cars out there. It's always crazy to me when you meet someone and you find out what they drive and you're like, wow, that is 
the perfect vehicle for you. You know, you, there, there are people out there that are Jeep Grand Cherokees. There are people out there that are Mitsubishi Eclipses. There are people out there that are GMC 2500 HDs. And when you meet somebody and they've got the perfect vehicle for them, uh, it makes sense because that is the element that car culture has been built around in this country your vehicle vehicles exist as a possession in a realm that no other possession does uh, it's partly because of how expensive they are and how essential they are to our way of life but they also lend themselves you can get a car that is the exact shape size color nationality that means the most to you furthermore if you're a car guy if you don't just own a car for uh, transportation you're tied into this self-reliance movement I don't, I don't have to pay to get my oil changed i change my oil i fix the car when it's broken i wash the car i rotate the tires i winterize it you know what i mean i do everything it's self-reliance it's ownership it's self-expression it's freedom that's what cars are in north america possibly everywhere and so if the automotive industry wants to change the paradigm, they have to do just that. And they have to somehow undermine the ownership, the self-expression, the freedom that goes along with automobiles. This is how they do it, folks. You don't own your remote start anymore. That's all there is to it. Now, as a, as a, as a final note, I will say this might be a good thing because we've hit critical mass with how expensive vehicles can get. We're never going to be able to increase wages to the point where a family SUV should cost 100 grand. It's just it doesn't work that's not people are going to be forced into these subscription programs and that's what they want that's the whole point here so the purpose of this video was not really so much to tell you about the toyota thing though i do love pointing out why people should hate toyota it was to keep everybody on guard keep an eye out for things that are pushing car culture out of the hands of the consumer and into the hands of the automaker because their vision for car culture is much different from what our ideal vision would be. So by all means, leave me a comment down there in the squawk boxes. As always, let me know what other things have you seen that are great examples of car culture being taken out of the hands of the enthusiasts and put into the hands of the executives behind the desks at Toyota and Ford and Jeep and whatever else. If you like the video like the video by all means leave me a comment down there in the squawk boxes to tell me that you like the video or that you didn't like the video or i don't know do whatever you want self-reliance freedom of choice do whatever you want hang from the ceilings like the video if you like the video i mean that's common sense you can dislike the video but for some reason they made the dislike button like a faux button i don't, I don't know uh i would like to remind everybody about the dne holiday hoop -a -thon. i'm gonna link a video right here that explains it but if you would like to win a bag full of tools watch this video here it's going to tell you how you could do that it's the D, &E holiday hoop -a -thon. we're asking everybody to decorate their vehicles for christmas send us a picture or a video and we will enter you to win the viewers are going to vote whoever got the best one whole bag full of tools got all kinds of good stuff in there all right so without further ado as always thanks for watching mm -hmm.